You worked on this this cannabis legislation for several years, as you said, and I I wonder if you could talk about the the the, the cannabis fears and misconceptions hurdles and roadblocks that you ran into and how you learned to address those in a, in a positive way. Okay. So I talked to everyone, whoever wanted to talk to me, you know, I have elected officials who'd say, look, I want to be with you, but my community is not there. Will you come and talk to them if I host a town hall meeting? And I say, yes, absolutely. And they go, well, you know, it's going to be a really hostile audience. And I would say, no, it's okay. I can handle hostile, hostile audiences, not to worry. Um, and I would go out and sometimes they would be really hostile audiences, but they also were audiences who really didn't understand the issue and didn't have a lot of facts. So I would always go out prepared with all kinds of materials that were you know, the facts that were scientifically backed up, you know, first issue, which I still find amazing, but first issue, it's a gateway drug. It, this will lead to heroin and fentanyl and opioid addiction. And I would try to walk through, you know, the differences between the drugs and why the vast statistical majority of scientific research studies have shown that marijuana was not a gateway drug, that marijuana could be addictive to some people who suffered from being prone to addiction. Some people are genetically prone to addiction to lots of different substances, um, but that marijuana had a lower rate of addiction than alcohol or tobacco. Um, and that it was mostly a psychological addiction, which could be fairly easily gotten over. So I would go to, you know, talk to people who were hostile to this issue, and I would try to educate them about the evidence that there was not medical dangers from marijuana. You know, and people would say, well, I've heard that you can use marijuana and then have a psychotic um, break. And we'd look for the research for them and show them that, you know, there are people who may use too much marijuana and feel dizzy and the room is spinning. And they may define that as feeling like they've totally lost control, but that it's not what doctors describe as psychotic anything. Um, sure. And that most cases of someone quote unquote, overdosing on marijuana involves falling asleep. And then they wake up and they're better. Um, we talked about the concerns for children's exposure to marijuana. And, and I agreed that there is some risk to the developing brain from using any kinds of drugs. That's why we also say you can't use alcohol until you're 21. And so even though some people didn't agree with me, I quickly moved to, we were only going to legalize over age 21 for marijuana. Now that doesn't mean I don't think teenagers are still going to figure out how to get it and use it because that's what I did. And it was completely illegal. Um, but to try to explain that actually marijuana today in a or before we legalized, it was easier to get marijuana in New York state than alcohol or tobacco. And that's what I was told by police all over the state that you need ID to get alcohol and tobacco and fake IDs have actually gotten pretty hard to get away with. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,